I'm going to start and anybody else who comes in uh, will hopefully be able to be able to pick up afterwards. So thank you all for coming. I'm not sure if you are brides to be or you're going to a big wedding or a party, but this is just a crazy time. I was saying yesterday to my team that out of 11 patients I saw yesterday afternoon, five of them were brides to be. So all these people getting married, exciting times, fun times, but also, you know, everyone's trying to look their absolute very best. Um, so thank you very much for joining. I'm going to go over both skincare and just a little bit of advice on what to do in the lead up to having your wedding or whatever event that it is that you're going to. So I'm going to start from two months. Uh, basically, the best routine that you can do is the one that you're going to be consistent with. And really a few months before your wedding, and ideally even three months before your wedding, you really start on a good consistent routine with nice actives. Um, that gives it enough time for the skincare to work. And also if for some reason you have some unusual sort of reaction with any product that you obviously don't have any, you know, that doesn't impact your big day. So what does that consist of? So in my opinion, you should always reveal, enhance and protect the skin. And what that means is that you need to cleanse really well so you can get rid of any of the dead skin debris, it really creates the foundation of palette so that any of the nice actives that you're gonna place on top, you will then place on top. And then finally, you need to enhance with these different actives, whether it's antioxidants, whether it's uh, you know uh, hyaluronic acid, retinol, stem cells, niacinamide, lots of different in, you know, ways of enhancing the skin with topical uh, actives. And then finally to protect, and again, protection doesn't just come in the form of SPS, which is very, very important, but it also comes in the form of antioxidants to help prevent oxidative damage and help reverse that damage. Um, so that's the consistency that you need to have. You don't need to have too many different products, but you should have at least those three steps. And there's certain ingredients that I think everybody should have in their skincare armoire. And that is at any age, by the way, is to have the SPF, as I said, to protect also to have the vitamin C and the retinol. And I think those are you know, three important essential skincare ingredients for all skin types at all ages that will benefit and give you healthy, glowing, radiant skin. So that's my, my trio, my famous trio. But what should you do for the two months before having uh, your wedding? One of my favorite ingredients is our Bright and Perfect. It's vitamin C. And I love this product because it's a serum. It's incredibly light. I'm just going to open the cap and and um, you can use it in the morning and the evening, basically. Sorry, this one's new, so I have to open the, turn it the other way. So basically it has a very light consistency. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a serum, not super thick, and you, know, you can just put it on and it just is very light, but very hydrating to the skin. So you know, this is packed with uh, encapsulated, vitamin C, as well as azelaic acid, which are both skin brighteners. Uh, vitamin C is a building block for skin itself. So it helps increase collagen production. So that's going to make your skin look a little bit more dewy in the long term. Also a great skin hydrator, as well as a brightener. We also have hyaluronic acid in it, which is where the hydration comes in from, but then brightening. So vitamin C helps decrease pigmentation, from sun exposure and also helps to redensify that skin. So think about fine lines and wrinkles. So as I said before, just a powerhouse ingredient it helps collagen production, helps decrease pigmentation and helps to give your skin that glowy do, you know, radiant look. Um, and again, it has azelaic acid, which is also not only brightening, but it's also really good for inflammation of the skin. So it's a, it's a calming effect. Um, you know, vitamin C is one of those ingredients that I just can't live without. So that's what I would do in terms of prioritizing your AM serum. And in the evening, as I mentioned before, that's when I would use this retinol skin booster. And this is really a lovely product that has, you know, retinol, 2% retinol, and it's a drop. It's the last thing you do in your skincare routine. I put a few drops in my hands and I put it on top of my face. And what retinol does is again, it has, it helps increase skin activity. 
And it also helps to boost your collagen production. So it increases cell turnover. Again, it's a skin brightener. It's a densifier for, for the skin. Uh, and it will also help to maintain collagen stimulation. So these are the two sort of things that you should add into your skincare regimen if you're not using them. Um, the other thing that I'd like to do in office uh, in combination with this uh, is something for pigmentation called BBL, which is basically a souped up IPL. IPL is intense pulse light, BBL is broadband light. And basically that's using different wavelengths of light that target redness as well as pigmentation in the skin. So if you suffer from perinasal or blood vessels around the nose, if you have some broken capillaries on the skin, if you're rosacea prone and have a T-zone with just generalized redness, um, if you're somebody who's had a lot of sun exposure and lots of you know sunspots on the face, this is the type of treatment that you would do perfect for a couple months before uh, the big day, because what it does is those areas of pigmentation become darker for about five to six days and then they lighten up and you need a series of those treatments every two to you know four weeks apart from each other. So ideally you could even start it at, at three months prior. So I think it's a really nice treatment to really give you glowing skin, doesn't change how you look. It just makes it look like you have that foundation coupled with vitamin C and retinol. You're really gonna have an excellent way to give yourself that radiant, beautiful skin. So that's what I like in office. At home, I also love to have the LED. And basically, there's two different modalities on this. One is the red, and one is the blue, which actually looks like purple. And basically, the different modalities, the red is for regeneration and rejuvenation. It has red light as well as infrared light. And then the blue, which is, looks like a little bit purpley, um, helps with inflammation, but it's also really great for people who, who suffer from a bit of acne, because what it does is that it helps, it has an anti-inflammatory aspect to it, but it also helps decrease the amount of P acnes, which is a type of bacteria that sits on the skin and contributes to acne. So a really nice way to, um, you know, give yourself a glow uh, and be able to do it in the comfort of your own home. It's for 10 minutes. It's self-monitored. You put it on, you relax, very important to relax for that 10 minutes. Minutes. And then afterwards, you know, if you want to go out, you have beautiful glowing skin. And if you're using it as a treatment for, for instance, um, you know, some acne, then what I would recommend is that you would place it on at least three or four times a week. If you're doing it for rejuvenation, even once you're going to get that improvement, but you'll get continued improvement with each time that you use it. So just my favorite at home treatment to use um, whenever you can. I also wanted to talk about a little bit of laser resurfacing or, and rejuvenation to help with skin texture. We have things in the office or other doctors do too as well. Um, things like a nano peel, which is basically using a laser to take the top few microns, like literally, you know, microns of skin away. And what that does, it's, it helps with skin texture. It also helps with pigmentation. It helps with fine lines and, you know, very fine lines and also with pores. So you can actually see the sebum in them. Sometimes they, they sort of evaporate. It's really quite um, nice to do. If you are somebody who has some acne scarring or you have more, you know, you're a little bit in, you're not as young as your twenties and you want to have something a little bit stronger, you can have, you know, either microneedling, which will help with acne scarring and doesn't have too much downtime, or you can take it a step further with something like halo, which is an erbium laser that causes fractional ablation to the skin and really helps with pigmentation. It helps with skin density. It just like makes you have beautiful glowing bouncy skin. So I love doing those treatments along again with the vitamin C and the retinol. I think that those are things that you can do all the time. You can of course use the, the red mask um, to help with healing for that too. So I think that's just something that you can use all the time. Uh, and obviously if you're microneedling and you use the retinol, you're actually getting even more improved penetration of your ingredients because you've created these little micro um, cha channels for the ingredients to go into. So I love actually mixing some miso in with, with the microneedling sometimes too, just to get that better penetration of the ingredients that you want. Now, if you're someone who feels like, you know, your skin's dry, it lacks luster, and you just feel like you want to give it like a little boost to make it a little bit more glowy, that's where I love things like Profilo and Nucleophil 
And basically, profilo is a type of hyaluronic acid that is like medicine for the skin. Um, someone told me it's like moisturizer in a needle. That's how they explained it to me. It's, you know, a few injection points. You can do it on the face, the neck, the decolletage. And what it does is that it spreads. So you get these little boluses. And then over the next couple of days, it spreads and it really rejuvenates the skin from inside, helps promote collagen production, but it's not a volumizer. You will not get puffy. You will not get, you know, full. You will not look at like a pillow face. So it's not at all a volumizer. It's really for that internal hydration of the skin. And nucleophil is something that's new in my practice. And it's, it's new in the UK, actually. So it's a polynucleotide. So it's not even a filler. It's not hyaluronic acid at all. What it is, it's the building blocks of our collagen and you inject it. And basically that also jump starts and it helps decrease puffiness around the eyes. It helps decrease redness. And again, it stimulates collagen production without volumization. So again, something that I absolutely love. Uh, and what I would add to that topically in terms of skincare is our hyaluronic acid serum, which is super light. Uh, and it's just divine. This is like one of my favorite go-to products because it just makes you feel instantly hydrated immediately. So really nice product to be able to use. You can layer it. So, you know, you, you use it first in terms of any other products. So you'd st always start with your serums first and then you put your moisturizer and, and then um, an oil or an SPF, depending on what you're using. Um, I think this is a good time also to talk about injectables. So I think a lot of people like to know about injectables, uh, Botox, for instance, hyaluronic acid fillers, uh, dermal fillers in general. And I would say that if you're going to go down the route of injectables, uh, then I would definitely do it a little bit beforehand and perhaps even do a trial, you know, months beforehand to see if you're going to like Botox. So, um, one of the places people always complain about are the number 11s in between the eyebrows. That's a perfect place at any point, uh, you know, a month before the wedding, up until a month before the wedding, that you can inject a little bit of botulinum toxin so you can't frown. So I can move my eyebrows, but I have clearly had some Botox in that area. So that's actually something really nice. Sometimes people are complaining about their crow's feet and they want to do something about that so they don't look so lined in their you know, photographs of the wedding. And again, a little bit of botulinum toxin or another neuromodulator in this area can actually help open and widen the eye area. So you can get like a millimeter or two even of a brow lift. And then if you have a lot of forehead lines, that's also something that can be done with a little bit of neurotoxin. And that's basically you're injecting the area of those muscles that cause lines for movement. So Botox will never help a static line. It only helps prevent or decrease those lines caused by muscle movement. So, you know, like I said, I can't frown or I don't actually get lines around my eyes. So I don't really have any here, but I do have a little bit in my upper eyebrow just to help open my eye a little bit. And then finally you can do the forehead, which again, I'm frozen. I'm not frozen, but I have some movement, but I don't have much. And so again, you can do botulinum toxin up here. And basically that functions to, you know, help elevate the eyes, but also help decrease the, those wrinkles that form from the movement of that upper eyelid. Some people like to do a little lip flip. They don't want to have any filler in their lip, but they just want to have that little bit of a zhuzh. And so a little bit of Botox in this area can help flip the lip. Um, some, you know, people, you know, like my age, you know, you get these bands, you can inject those bands with botulinum toxin too, or any sort of not a neuromodulator. And the nice thing about that is that, you know, like when you're animated and you're so happy, you make all these weird faces, but then you won't see those bands coming down, which is really quite nice. So that's actually something that can be done as well. Another great place for Botox is underneath the underarms. Um, you will not sweat for your big day. If you're having a summer wedding, you can do this up to two weeks beforehand. And what it does is decreases the amount of sweating. we sometimes do a little light spray on the face for some people who have a lot of facial um, hyperhidrosis, which is basically excess swe sweating. I've done it in the groin area, hands, hands and feet are a little bit more uncomfortable, but you can also do it in the hands and feet. Um, so lots of really fun places that you can use the neuromodulators like Botox uh, and Dysport and Azalor. Um, fillers, on the other hand, are something I'd like to do a couple months before because they have long longevity. So at this point, you can do them without any problem whatsoever. So you can 
uh, do it a couple months in advance. The nice thing about hyaluronic acid fillers is that it's reversible. So if for some reason you're like, oh my God, I hate what I look like. You can have it dissolved and in enough time so that you don't have to worry at all about your wedding. Um, the reason I like to do fillers, dermal fillers earlier is also because there's always a risk anytime you do any injection in the face of having a little bit of bruising. And while most people don't have bruising, it's like Murphy's law or, you know, the catch 22, that when you have something really important, that's the time that you're going to have um, a little bit of bruising. So this is the perfect time. If you want to have a little bit in the tear trough, if you feel like you're a little dark in that area, you can volumize that area. If you feel that you want a little bit in the lips or a little bit of contouring on your jawline or your cheeks, neck, I mean, literally anywhere. Sometimes I even put it in the soles of my patient's feet because they know they're going to be on heels the whole night and they want a little bit of cushioning. You might've heard that, you know, people on the red carpet like to do that. It's not my favorite to do because it's a little uncomfortable, but it seems to help people tremendously in, in what they're doing. So those are the things that I would say I would complement that again, both of those injectables with our retinol, with our vitamin C and with our hyaluronic acid. And as I mentioned before, there's no better way to support collagen production with at-home treatments again with your LED light. So those, that's my little tidbits for a couple months before. A couple months before you have a lot of options and it's just really nice to be able to, you know, look and see. And if you don't know what the best option is for you, that's where you have to go and visit someone like me or somebody that you trust who can give you a little bit of that insight as to what you may or may not be able to do. And it's, you know, the earlier you do it, you don't need to do it too far in advance, but you should do it at least, you know, a couple months beforehand so that you can get the best outcome and that you don't feel disappointed that you, you know, you started too late. It's never too late to start, but sometimes you won't get, be able to get the, the result that you want if you don't start early enough. So a few months before perfect timing uh, to come in one month in advance. So this is when stress is at its peak. You're like, oh my God, my guest list, people are coming, they're canceling your dress, your food, in-laws, future in-laws, um, potentially even your own kids. I mean, there's just a lot going on. And so this is a time where people get frantic. They're also you know, th th there's a lot of anxiety. The anxiety level is high. You're like, oh my God, so much going on. Um, also so much fun, by the way, your own wedding. So, you know, something really fun to look forward to. Uh, but this, again, this is the time, you know, I spoke about skin boosters like Profilo and Nucleophil. They're usually multiple treatments. Uh, Profilo is done two to four weeks apart for a bride, uh, a younger bride in their twenties and thirties, I would say, try and do it four weeks apart. You'll get the maximum effect and try and have the, the second one a month before your wedding, because that's when your skin will just be absolutely the most glowing. Same with nucleophils, they work in a similar manner. And so you'll, you'll just get a better result uh, for that specific day. You'll just, you know, that'll be the culmination of uh, your dewiness and, and looking as good as you want. And it'll continue. So you'll have it through your honeymoon and, you know, the first few months of your marriage as well. So that's where you continue on. And so you continue on with the treatments that you were we were talking about before. If you're somebody who has pigmentation and redness issues, uh, or you're somebody, you know, maybe you have lots of sun damage on your neck and your chest and your decolletage, and you just want to even out your skin tone before you have your white dress on without having, you know, makeup that might run onto the white dress. You can have those BBL treatments, those IPL treatments that I spoke about. And like I said, you need to have at least three of those. So you need to be able to fit those in, you know, a couple, the last of which should be really be three weeks before your wedding, nothing after, you know, after that point, I would also say the same for any injectables. I would not want to do any injectables in your skin three weeks before. So really all of this a month before is like, you know, that's it just in case you get a bruise or just in case, you know, like one of the stubborn areas of pigmentation go dark and it, it takes a little bit longer for it to fall off or flake off. You will have that time and you won't be stressed out because believe me, you'll have enough stress of other things that you'll be worried about um, than to worry about, you know, having an issue with your skin. But this is also the best time to do all the touch-ups. So if you did do something for your underarms for hyperhidrosis, or you did a little sprinkle on your face for a little bit of the facial hyperhidrosis, or even flushing, you can do Botox. You can also um, 
have those touch ups so that they're perfect before your wedding day. Uh, this is also a nice time a month before that you could do a little micro needling, nothing too aggressive, because remember, you don't want your skin to have issues or, you know, to become angry. So you just do light ones uh, just to make sure that your skin feels and looks the best that it can. And again, you supplement all of that with your home care, with your vitamin C, with your retinol, with your LED. So, you know, this, these are the things that you can do at home without much, you know, you can, you could even be discussing, you know, what you're going to be doing for your wedding while you have the LED on, or you have a mask on or something like that. So it's a really nice way to be able to get everything going for yourself in terms of getting ready for that. You want to be picture perfect, essentially. Um, what I would also want to point out is what you shouldn't do. Um, so you should not have any aggressive treatments. I would not have any ablative uh, laser treatments within the month before your wedding. So if you are somebody who has acne scarring and you were like, oh, I just want to see if I can get it better. Now is no longer the time to do that. If you miss that boat, then you do it after your wedding, if it's still bothering you, but do not do it in that month beforehand. Um, laser hair removal. That's another thing that you could do a month before, because we know it lasts about six to eight weeks. So that'll make sure that you, you know, you feel as rejuvenated as you can without having to get a quick wax or, you know, shave or whatever it is, however you want to remove that hair. Um, and finally, I also wouldn't do any aggressive facials during this time because, you know, picking at the face or being highly aggressive can also lead to irritation and you don't want to get like that little red mark that just is not moving. So those are my caveats. Now, if you do and you by accident and you, I don't know, maybe one of you are getting married soon, you've done a mistake and oh my God, you got a bruise and you're like, how am I going to get rid of this bruise? There are some things that can be done if you go to a doctor with special lasers. We have such a laser. So sometimes people have an important event and they've gone somewhere and they didn't realize that they're going to potentially have a bruise and then they end up like I said, Murphy's Law with this big bruise. And what we can do is we can zap it and help break it down a little bit. So um, you obviously don't want to panic about that just before your wedding. So not something you want to go down. Uh, next, a week before your wedding. This is when the excitement's you know, at its peak. Everybody's flying in. You're getting all these messages. All the little details are coming together. Your parents are getting on their nerve on your nerves if they're involved with it. Um, this is where you want to just keep consistent with your skincare. Make sure that you have time for yourself. Um, I love using ampules during this time, and for me, the Glow Boost ampules are something that are amazing. And they're you know five days before the wedding. You break open ampule in the morning and then one in the evening. They're very easily labeled. They have different light acids in them. And you place it as the first layer of skincare that you do to give you that glowing, radiant skin. Um, I have never heard anybody have any sort of um, issue with having these glow boost ampules. But like I said, with everything else, you might want to try it, you know, maybe the month before this just to make sure or a couple weeks before. But this is something that will give you an instant glow in that week. I love it for all major events. Uh, very easy to use. It has a little sleeve, I call them, um, so that you can break it and, you know, open it and then use the serum on the face. I actually put it on the neck and the hands and even the back of the arms if there's some extra. Um, this is where you wanna keep your skin as dewy as possible. LED light, as I mentioned, the red light will be excellent for this. If you feel that you have some events before your wedding and you know, you're know you wearing a lot of heavy makeup or you're sweating and you're wearing makeup that you might not normally be wearing, then what I would say is that you know use the blue light instead of the red light to try and calm that skin use a lot of the hyaluronic acid, which is a great way to keep the skin hydrated without irritating it. I, if you're going out and, you know, I just was watching on Instagram, one of my friend's sisters got married, a big, big fat uh, Indian wedding. And they had seven days of like fabulousness in Venice. And I was like, oh my God, I'm exhausted looking at the pictures. And that's where, you know, these types of things like the golden eye masks are a great way to deep up the eye, give you hydration, decrease fine lines and wrinkles. And I love putting it in the fridge for about 10, 15 minutes in the morning or whenever I'm about to use it to give it that little bit of refreshment. Um, really a great way to mask that you're really tired. 
but also just a great way to hydrate the skin, you know, a really nice go-to. You can even put it on while you're having your makeup done on the day of ha having your wedding so that you just, you know, give your eyes just that little bit of a zhuzh. Um, so again, what else can you do? I, this is the time that I would say, if you have a facialist or you've done a hydrofacial before, go back to that person, have a nice facial, have a nice relaxing facial, massaging facial with products that you've already been using, not something new at all, um, just to get the lymphatics going and also just to relax you and let you enjoy that time right before your wedding. Um, and as I mentioned, the LED is just my ultimate favorite go-to home treatment that you can possibly do. And finally, on the day of your wedding, I mean, everything is at its peak. Uh, everybody is coming together. You have your makeup, your hair, your dress, your everybody, your friends, your bridesmaids, if you have them, your, you know, your parents, the in-laws. And of course, you want to look your most beautiful for your groom or whoever your partner is. And this is the day that masking is the perfect way. You wake up, put your nice gold eye masks on, let them sit there, take it all in, do a little bit of meditation even with your eye masks on so you can you know, clear your head uh, and really try and enjoy the moment. It's a little hectic, just remember on that day, only you are gonna know any of the shortfallings. No one knows what you were planning. So if something's not absolutely perfect, it might irritate you, but no one else is gonna know, so don't tell them. But really just you know, use your eye masks, refresh yourself, put on the LED, give yourself a moment to take in this really fabulous day, you know, obviously one of the biggest moments in your life and you know, try and relax. So I think that's you know, really important. And you know, what I love about this is that this automatically gives you a glow and makes you feel well. So this red light is also just, just such a lovely way to make you feel good. Uh, so you'll feel, I don't know, you could be getting married in the mountaintop or in Antarctica, but you put this mask on and it just makes you feel warm, not hot, because it actually is not hot at all, but it makes you feel like you're in a, a happy place sunny place. And again, for the mood, it's really fabulous, but also for all those collagen stimulating benefits. Uh, and again, 10 minutes, it takes no time whatsoever. So you can do this before you have your makeup done. Um, and I think with that, you know, that's most of what I would say is the way to go forward. I did that so fast. I think I was talking really fast. Um, but what I would say is that, you know, try this moment, you'll see when you get married, you think you've been preparing for so long, it goes in a split second and you're, the wedding's over. And the next day you're like, did that happen? It was the best day, night, whatever of your life. And then you're like, that went by so quickly, all that effort for um, just a quick party um, and a lifetime of uh, memories to make. But, you know, it's really important to try and relax. Um, obviously, way easier, better said than done because I'm on the other side of it now. I've been married a very long time. I, I was about to, to, you know, think about it, but I think it's like 2006, so 16 years. Um, but it feels just like yesterday. So, and I still remember my wedding and it makes me smile. So, you know, you will look your most beautiful on your wedding day, no matter what, because you will have the biggest smile. And remember that the most beautiful people are the ones who are glowing from the inside. So if you're, if you can take a moment to take it all in, have your eyes sparkling, you know, make sure if you're, if you're getting married now and you have allergies, you take your allergy medicine. So you're not sneezing or your eyes aren't red. There are some nice eye drops. I don't recommend them all the time, um, but there's one called Sustain that you can get on Amazon, which is a really great way to keep the whites of your eyes white without damaging any of the blood vessels there. Um, you will probably not eat much on that day or even drink much, but make sure you drink plenty of water. Um, you know, the day goes by so quickly that you, you, you just don't know what's going on really. So I would have somebody and say, can you come to me every once in a while? And I don't know, um, put a veggie in my mouth or I don't know, put something, give me something. So I can, I, you know, you, you, you're sustained. You're going to have so much adrenaline going on that you, you're not actually going to need any food. Now, the last thing that I would want to say is that in the week before your wedding and in the weeks before a lot of people change their diet. Um, and obviously 
that's always a great way to decrease your glycemic index, you know, try and take out refined sugars, obviously all the things that you know. But if you can do it the, the few days, at least before your wedding, uh, then you can at least feel like you're not bloated and, you know, to start, blah, 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 blah. try to stay away from carbs and refined sugars so that you um, feel that you look and feel your very best. Because sometimes if you don't look, if you feel you don't look your best then you it affects your mind in the way that your your state of being. So that's my two cents on, you know, maintaining a well balanced diet. But at the same time, you should enjoy it. Don't drink too much, but definitely, you know, have a have a glass of champagne. And if you're drinking, make sure that you're using lots of water because the last thing you want is to the night before at your rehearsal dinner, or, you know, whatever it is that you're having, drink a lot and then wake up the next day with sallow dehydrated skin. So for every glass of whatever it is that you're drinking, make sure you have at least one, if not two glasses of water to chase it. Just my two thoughts. Um, and that's it. Enjoy, have fun. Um, you can shop all of our products, um, you know, online. Uh, we have a discount code. I'm just, it's called wedding. So you can get 15% off. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, if there were a trio of products from our, you know, line that I would say you should be on, it would be for skincare, it would be the retinol, the vitamin C and the hyaluronic acid, because those are the things that are going to constantly give you a boost and are going to make your skin the most visible, visibly beneficial. And then finally, this LED is just like an investment. You can use it for your wedding. You can use it after your wedding. Um, if you have grown kids and you're getting married, they can even use it for the blue light if you clean it properly. So it's just a really nice at home treatment. Um, I also wanted to say, if you have any questions, or I'm not sure if we can make it open in terms of asking questions out loud, but you can write it in the chat. I'm gonna just look, cause I did see there's some, some bits here. Um, let's see. So someone said, very good question. So I usually get, uh, get spots whenever I need my skin to behave, of course. Um, oops, I've, where'd it go? What do you recommend for this on the day of an event? So depends on what day your event is. So if God, if, you know, if, if unfortunately you have something that pops up just on the day of your event, if you have access to someone like me or a dermatologist, you can go and have a very quick, uh, cortisone injection that will immediately, it won't make the redness go away, but it will make, if you have a volcano go down a little bit. The other thing that I would say is that you can put ice, uh, take an, you know, anti-inflammatory like an ibuprofen. And I would use a hydrocortisone cream on top of it because sometimes that can just take the inflammation down a notch. Um, so hydroquin, uh, excuse me, I don't know if I said hydroquin. I did not mean that. Um, uh, a corticosteroid. So you need a cortisone hydro. Um, Hydro, why do I keep saying hydroquinone? You need a hydrocortisone cream to be able to put on that because if you use um, anything else, it, it's not going to dry out in time. It's not going to make it go down, but that is an anti-inflammatory uh, cream. It's over the counter and it can help decrease the height. And then, uh, you know, I, I know you don't want to necessarily have a red mark on your face, but a red flat mark is a lot easier to cover than, than something that's quite high. Um, what's the right order of products to use um, with the vitamin C, the ampules, retinol, and the night serum? So very good question. So as I said, you should always use the lightest consistency first, and then you move on. So in, if you're using the ampules, I'm going to go through and pretend like you're using all of them. So if you use the ampules, you cleanse your face, you open one of the ampules up, you place it in your hands, you place it all over your face, your neck, your decolletage, backs of hands. You let that sit there for until it's dry, you know, just so that it, the absorption happens. And then you use the serum and then you use the most medicated serum first. So if you were going to use Brighten and Perfect, as well as the HA serum, I would put the Brighten and Perfect on first, two pumps again on the face, neck decolletage, and then I would follow that with the hyaluronic acid. And if you were going to put a moisturizer, you could put a moisturizer. Most people, you know, they like the hyaluronic acid with these two, and then they then put on their SPF and then you're done. Uh, and if you have the eye cream, of course, you put the eye cream on before, you know, at the same level of this, uh, when you put the serums on. Now at nighttime, again, you would open up your ampule, break it open, put it on your face. If you're using your eye cream, you put your eye cream on upper and lower eyelids and then 
you would go with your serums. So again, if you were using your hyaluronic acid serum, you'd put this on. If you were using Rest and Revive, you would put that on. And then finally, you would put on the retinol skin booster because an oil is always the last thing that you put on your face. Remember, it's like if you put something on top of an oil, it just won't penetrate. So you might as well not bother putting anything else on top. Um, and which serum should be used with the LED mask? That's a great question. So you don't actually need any serums with the LED mask. I would not use active. So do not put the vitamin C on, do not put retinol on because they can become unactive with um, LED light or any light in general. So what I would do is I would wash my face and with a clean face or with something like hyaluronic acid or the rest and revive stem cell serum, that's what I would put on for this because it has better penetration. Um, I wouldn't use it with a retinol because you could have too much activation and vitamin C will become deactivated like that. So I, I, I would only use the hyaluronic acid or the rest and revive uh, in this product or anything that's very light and is more for hydration for better penetration, but without actives. That's a very good question. Um, let's see. So any other questions for me? Nope. Um, I want to thank you all for joining. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to uh, me on MZ Skin Official on our Instagram or on Dr. Mariam Zamani. Always like to help where I can. Uh, and yeah, I think that's it. So I'm just going to check one last time to see if there are any other questions. But I don't think so. Thank you so much for joining. And